I've been calling these uh, types of lenses Fresnel, but I believe the correct pronunciation is Fresnel. And it's a type of composite compact lens developed by a French physicist, Augustine Jean Fresnel, late 1700s to early 1800s for use in lighthouses. It has been called the invention that saved a million ships. Now, I'm not going to go into all and try to read all this to you. I'd highly recommend you go to the Wikipedia site on Fresnel lenses. It's a lot of good information. This is just a typical image in there. Of a, of, there's different ways of making these things. Very good information. I highly recommend you uh, go to it. Now, I purchased a couple of Fresnel lenses for solar heating experiments, but I found out that not all Fresnel lenses are made the same. Unlike the original glass lighthouse lenses, most modern Fresnel lenses are made out of acrylic. YouTube has numerous videos showing Fresnel lenses repurposed from old projection TVs. They're usually large and can work very well. I didn't have an old projection TV or access to one, so I purchased a 500 millimeter round Fresnel lens with a focal length of 500 millimeters and two 250 millimeter round Fresnel lenses with a focal length of 100 millimeters. These were from Amazon, but the Amazon vendor was uh, six seasons. These particular lenses, though, may or may not still be available, but this was a link uh, to them. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this diagram here. This is from Wikipedia, this diagram right in here. This shows a Plano convex lens, convex meaning this curved side, Plano meaning the flat side. This would be a glass lens. You can look at one of my earlier videos. There'll be a link at the end. Shows you uh, how you can uh, uh, take a look at that magnifying sunlight. Now, in a Fresnel version of this, basically you're taking these curved elements from various segments of this curvature and just applying those to a much thinner surface, either glass or acrylic. Most modern ones are acrylic. Now, I uh, wanted to point out, if you look closely, this is curved, kind of mimicking the curvature of this lens here. Now, this shows the sun going through the center of it. This is information from Six Seasons, product information on Amazon. It shows a typical projection situation where you have a light source projecting it onto a large uh, Fresnel lens like in a projection TV. Where you're taking that point source, spreading it into a much larger image. We're not doing that. What we're trying to do is the opposite, where we take sunlight and then focus it down to a point source. Where I wanted to point out that in the center of this lens, there is no bending of the light. Same thing over here. It's only in these other outer elements you get this refraction or reflection, depending on how it's made, focusing it towards a central focal point. And beyond that focal point, the uh, light diverges and you lose intensity. So I made a demonstration uh, using some uh, laser pointers. I wanted to go to that next and show you what that looks like. First, I wanted to show you what a, uh, a close-up view of this uh, 250mm Fresnel lens I have looks like near the center. This is the best I could do with my uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max, but you can see the uh, center on all the concentric circles of the grooves that have the various shapes, and they, those shapes change as you progress in the center out to the outer edges. I should also point out Fresnel lenses are used as a way to uh, magnify print, make it easier to read, but uh, you need optically, optical distortion-free lenses to do that. Uh, these particular lenses aren't necessarily the best for that. Now they make little uh, pocket size lenses like uh, these here that you can use to keep in your wallet or your purse to make it easier to read print. And, uh, and then as you can see here, um, it, it makes it easy. It's, they usually actually work pretty good. So uh, that is another use for Fresnel lenses. Okay, this is my experimental setup. This is a just a model car modified for this. You may have seen it in my uh, earlier video called Gyroscopic Precession Powered Car. It's not doing that right now, but it's a convenient platform to be able to move 
these lasers around the experiment. This is a green laser pointer, blue laser pointer, red laser pointer. That's my 250 millimeter Fresnel lens. Uh, Grew sides this way towards the lasers. So I've got it further than the focal length. Focal length is supposed to be 100 millimeters. It's further than that now, just to do a little demonstration um, where you can see the focal length with steam. So what we're going to do is I've got the lasers on. Um, green ones here, blue ones in the center, red ones there. Okay, we're going to use a steamer so we can see the laser beams. You can't see a laser in space if there's no dust or moisture particles or uh, droplets or anything to scatter the light. So what we're going to do is use steam to scatter so we can get a little better look at that. The point where all the uh, lasers cross is the focal point and you can see as you go beyond the focal point they diverge and you lose intensity. This just makes it real easy to see that. Okay this is the uh, support frame that I made for the Fresnel lens. This is just one inch PVC pipe. I had some extra fittings, had to buy a few more but uh, managed to get it put together. These are just a snug fit down here so I could change the size of them if I want to. Same thing over here. Now up here, it's a little hard to see, but I split or sawed a crosshatch in this T so that when I tighten down this hose clamp, it'll squeeze down and I can snug up the uh, lens holder bracket just as much as I need to. Same thing over here, same thing. So this works actually works pretty good and it's durable, it'll hold up outside. So uh, we'll take a look at the lens uh, uh, holder bracket and uh, then put it in there and see what that looks like. One side's flat, now I've marked on here the flat side. I've got this centered in these one inch pieces of PVC pipe so that I can flip it around and it'll, it'll remain the same distance from the target. This little device is a piece of threaded rod which protrudes all the way to the other side. You can see it's on both sides. The idea of this is that when it's facing directly towards the sun, there should be minimal shadow here. And uh, that helps get it uh, as accurately aligned to the sun as you can within reason. These are just little pieces of one inch pipe. It will fit in the uh, fittings on the uh, holder that I made, and we'll take it out there and put it in and see what it does. But uh, now the other side I've got marked, see is having grooves, because this is the groove side. That way we can see which side works better when, it's, when that side is facing the sun versus the target. So we'll take this out, stick it in the uh, holder and, and stand and uh, see, why, see what we can do with it. Okay, we've got the uh, Fresnel lens with the bracket and the uh, stand. And these hose clamps are snug down, so it'll pretty much stay where I put it. And they can rotate it all the way around to see which side works better. Now, for those of you who haven't done much experimentation with solar concentrating devices or focusing devices, it's the condition of the sky is extremely important. See the clouds, it completely, uh, significantly reduces the uh, intensity of the sun. So don't even try to do an experiment like that. Now we're in South Carolina in the summertime, trying to find a clear blue sky day, and this is July is nearly impossible. So we're gonna have to do a hit or miss thing when we have the clouds go away after rain or something. So we're not gonna do anything with it right now, but even a haze in the sky, that's the typical you have in the summer, causes indirect sunlight and that drastically reduces it. I built a parabolic, parabolic trough collector, which is one of my earlier videos. I really noticed it with that. Um, magnifying glasses, any kind of focusing lens, this Fresnel lens, they all have the same issue. 
you need clear blue sky with the sun pointed directly at an incident on your device. And uh, so, you know, typical angle might be something like that. So if you don't have that, I wouldn't waste my time experimenting because you're gonna get results that aren't indicative of what you can really get. Solar panels, the clouds really affect the performance, but focusing or concentrating um, devices like this lens or like a parabolic trough collector, they're worthless. If, if you don't have a focus directly at the sun and you don't have a clear sky. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your experiments. I did a video on my 12 kilowatt ground mount solar panels. You can see uh, in this next uh, little segment here, the impact of clouds. The morning was partly cloudy. We had a few spikes down in kilowatts output. Then uh, around noontime or so, it just got really cloudy started getting rainy and just wiped it out. So that makes a huge difference, even on the uh, photoelectric uh, uh, panels. Now this is my parabolic trough collector I made uh, about seven years ago. Worked great, but it has to be focused directly at the sun. Any kind of haze in the sky diminishes it or anything like that. It's uh, there's no way it's going to do you any good if you don't have a way to track the sun. You not only need to track the sun, but on any kind of focusing solar concentrator, like this parabolic trough reflector that I made, um, or a magnifying glass or a Fresnel lens, um, any kind of haze in the sky greatly diminishes its uh, maximum efficiency. So unless you live in a place where there's a lot of clear blue sky, uh, it's not the best choice to be working with. Okay, it's about 3.28 p.m. on July 8th. And we've got our alignment pin pretty much directly at the sun, no shadow. Okay, in this case, the grooves are up. This is the groove side, flat side's underneath. Okay, we're just going to take a quick look at how quickly it easily catches this cardboard on fire. I mean, it's instant. No problem at all. Now we're going to flip it around. See the size of that spot? Now we're going to flip it around until now. Let's get the alignment pin back. There it is. See, that spot looks a lot different. It's not clear nearly as defined. But it looks like the focal length might be a little closer in this case. Let's see if we can prove that. Okay, we've got our groove sides are down. And uh, we're going to measure focal length to about try to approximate where the cardboard catches on fire. I've got the alignment pin is lined up directly at the sun. So let's take a look. Okay, I measured about uh, 48 to 49 centimeters, uh, which would be 480 to 490 millimeters. Uh, the advertised focal length was 500 millimeters, so it's close. And uh, so what we did, uh, looked at it one way, then uh, flip it around and take another look at it and uh, get it lined up again and... Uh, we ended up with the uh, about the same focal length. It's about about the same. Focal length is near as I can measure. It's about the same, and it works just about as well one way or the other. This case, flat side of the Fresnel lens is this side down. Grooves are up. We flip it around. alignment pin line back up and in this case the grooves are down the flat side is up works very similar I really think though 
a little hard to say, but I believe we get a little bit better focus with the groove sides up than down. Let's flip it back around this way. Okay. Yeah, this, this gets hotter instantly compared to the other way. So it looks like it'll work both ways, but it tends to work better with the groove side up and the flat side down. So if this was a Plano convex lens, flat one side, convex the other, the top side would be the convex side, the bottom side would be the flat side. Fresnel lens is kind of like you flattened out a Plano convex lens. But it, it works either way. Uh, and the, one of the main things that I've noticed is, and you can see it here, probably if you get slightly where we're not exactly in at the focal point. Let's get the camera. See flat sides down, grooves up. See that circle there? Okay. Now watch when I go the other way. In this case, flat sides up, grooves are down. It's not nearly as defined a focus. So I believe it really does work better with the grooves up towards the sun. And you get it up like this, and you know, it'll just, I mean, it's instant. It'll catch wood, whatever, on fire. Okay, hope you uh, enjoyed this. If you did, please uh, like the video, click on the round anisotropic plus subscribe button, and uh, we appreciate it.